Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Alt Kings podcast. I'm your host, Tate, and today I've got a one of a kind show for you guys. We have Tease with their founder, James. James, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Tate. Thanks for having me. Of course, it's a pleasure. We've seen those holiday sweaters venturing around the H Bar ecosystem. Gotta love it. Lehman's got one. <laughs> Tons of other H Bar variants do as well. I need to pick myself up one. We'll send you one right after the show. Oh. Appreciate that a lot. Absolutely. So official NFT sells physical clothes as well, paired with unique NFTs attached to them. Each NFT is a digital representation of the physical item, and it can be bought, sold, and traded on secondary marketplaces. Before we dive into all the snazzy stuff we got going on, I want to know a little more about yourself, James. Who are you and what inspired the, the creation of Tees? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, so... Gosh, my background is, so I'm actually a, a CPA. That's my background, but also real nice. estate. Actually, the split my time and what I'm doing when I'm not focusing on T's is like apartment real estate. So that's just something where I think as I started thinking about the space and where I could fit in and make a niche, it always came back to something physical. And as the kind of craziness slash euphoria of crypto punks and board apes came along, gosh, and probably later part of 2020 or early 2021. I'm trying to remember the timeline. Right around but, then, yeah. Yeah, but I was just like, man, this is so interesting. And having been a holder of different cryptos, and I, you and I talked, we've been bag holding <laughs> XRP yeah. for way too long. But as I started learning more about NFTs, I started thinking about what my interests were and how I could get involved and what would be interesting to me. And it just always came back to something physical. And I've also always loved fashion and so yeah, just said, let's see if we can give this a try and just dove in head first and yeah, got involved with some cool people on Phantom at the time and where we, we still have collections. And yeah, just, I think it was just a pretty natural kind of combination of, I, I like crypto, I believe in crypto, and I also have these other interests and just married them together and started official NFTs. And here we are a few years later, we're still kicking. Still kicking indeed. Gotta love it. So I'd love to know when someone sells the NFT... Does the closing piece come with it? Yeah, so that's the big one that's tough right that's now. The tricky part. That is. And I think you'll see even, I think a lot of people are just beginning to pay attention to the, the physical space companies like RTFKT, 90CC, Zuki, where they have, they've actually made some strides in the physical side of things. And so we're only like on the cusp of that, I would say. It's not something that we're really doing, but I would also say no one's doing it right now. So not with all of the components. Yeah, it's it's something that we're striving towards. And I think we'll get there at some point to be a custodian, if you will. But ours are more so focused on just the security aspect of it, right? Buying a clothing item that you intend on holding and watching appreciate and, and value or enjoying. And ultimately, at the end of the day, being able to prove ownership through the obviously the link with with the blockchain or hash graph in, in this case. Yeah, we do see a lot of issues with proving ownership of actual legit products, especially when it comes to fashion and clothing. I'm not necessarily too big into clothing myself, but I have dabbled in shoes in the past. Mm -hmm. And StockX specifically is one of those places where they have the verification process. And some of the sometimes some people are good enough to get away with off brand shoes and verifying them as authentic products and that's the sketchy part that comes into the web 2 world but thankfully with web 3 there's ways of authenticating those things in a much more secure scalable manner and i figured so whenever i asked that question about if it was possible for one to actually obtain the physical piece i figured it was going to be a no but i just wanted to throw it out there to see what you had to say because i knew it was a very tricky complex mechanism and i know it'd probably be easier if people did want to sell and then obtain that actual physical clothing piece they would probably need to one send it back to you and then you would send it off to the the other party i think that'd probably be the easiest route but i i guarantee you'll get there soon yeah ex exactly and it's interesting the Two, two points to, to uh, I want to talk to you right there is one is like the stock X, right? Like you get the little verification, like that, like token, like that green yeah. token, but there's nothing that actually pairs that token to the, <laughs> and, and to where you can track it and say that this clothing item other than linking it to it. And so yeah. in, in the case with these sweaters, we have something that's similar, right? Because we have this tag that kind of is affixed to it, right? So it's similar to that. 
But what I would say is that we have the ability with these tags through our partner, Authentic Vision, who creates these, what are called these meta anchor tags, where every single one of these has a, a serial number and every single serial number is one-to-one paired with an NFT ID or a serial number. So that's how we can really track individually. And so if someone were to scan this and say, okay, is this a legitimate official NFT? We'd be able to track that back to the hash graph in this case and actually locate it on the Hedera scanner. Yeah, thanks. So that's number one. And the number two is, so through our partners, which is Authentic Vision, they're an Austrian, originally a purely security label company. They've done security labels for all sorts of manufacturing products, but they've evolved into the cryptoverse and that's where they've created this meta anchor tag and they've been great to work with, but they also created a new version of this product that is in very much in, in beta, I think at this stage where you can actually transfer ownership through scanning it. So that's something that we haven't done a launch with that yet, but it's something that we've talked to them about and so definitely something that I foresee in, in the not too distant future. So nice. Are those two that. points, would you say, make you what makes you unique compared to other people selling clothing with NFTs? Yeah, I think there's a there's probably a couple of things. One is the fact that I feel like a lot of times when people are like selling an NFT, an issue that you let me take a step back. If you look at our tagline, it's like secure premium threads or premium secure threads. And we go back and yeah. forth as to which one's more important. It's like the trilemma. But yeah, so for us, it's a lot of what was out there was just Shopify, maybe not the best quality at the end of the day. And so that's something that we've always really cared about is delivering a product that feels very premium. And that's something that I think distinguishes us. It's something that I am so anal about, like my own clothing that I'm not going to put something out there that I don't feel strongly about. And so there's that. And then there is that security piece. And I think for us, when we were looking into different technologies that we could use that would really complement all the benefits of the blockchain, we ultimately landed on the more visual based labels as opposed to the like RFID type of label, the NFC sure. type of label. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One is that I truly believe that this uh, label that we have here, and I can I don't necessarily need to do a demo, but you can see, I'll show you. There's two elements. One is what looks like this QR code right here. And one is yep. this holographic shield. And what that is, that is a label that is individually serialized and that cannot be duplicated even by Authentic Vision, the company that makes them. So there's a heck of a lot of security built into that. Yeah. Whereas in order to achieve something, of a similar security, you're talking it, with uh, NFC chips, you're talking about something that costs order of magnitudes higher. Scalability and things like that are something that when we looked at this uh, potential partners or who we could acquire these things from, and quite honestly, most of them are just complete crap, complete garbage, don't work at all, but you found it in testing. But we said beyond it being reliable, is this scalable, right? Or are these chips going to cost five, ten dollars and add that to our product and obviously some in some way pass it to the customer? And so we wanted to get the full benefit of it without it being like something that we had to sell itself. So just be implied in the product. Makes sense. That's really cool. And it's definitely a nice tag along, I'd say. It's that you gotta write there next to your sweater if you ever just want to show somebody like, hey, this is authentic authenticated and verified on the blockchain. Check it yeah. out. We can, you know what, you can cut this too, but I'll show it just because it's neat if you haven't been able to, to do it. But so basically what you do, grab the tag there. Scan the barcode. You grab the tag. You use this app made by Authentic Vision called Check If Real. And you just find it, which I'm having a tough time doing because I'm on camera almost got it but there you go so it's going to verify it the barcode tells it where to redirect to each one of those is individually programmable so we can have a unique experience for any different individual holder of the nft and that brings you to the web right now it just has you bring it to our website and puts around there there's that element of verification so anyway feel free to keep that in there yeah for sure if you'd like to great but, yeah. that was cool 
I'd love to know more about Authentic Vision. How'd you make that partnership? Like, how, how did everything connect at the, in the beginning? Where'd you find them? How'd you network with them? And how are you guys working together today? Yeah, so that's a, a great story. So I would say it was probably middle to late 2021. We launched our first collection on Phantom in like March of, I think it was March of 2021. We were actually, I think the 29th collection minted on Phantom. And so we were, didn't, no one knew what they were doing, but we certainly didn't at the time. And so we were looking for a way to actually prove the link between the physical item and the NFT. And so we really just started researching. And so the more research we did, the more we went away from the NFC chips and saw that there was really something with these, the visual verification technique, especially with imaging technology that we have built into all of our phones is just absolutely remarkable. We reached out to Authentic Vision. I think at the time they were just starting to, we all were trying to figure out what are we going to do in this space, right? This physical space and linking with NFTs and all that. And so it was much more of like a, like a business conversations that we were having and you know, how are we going to make money? How are you guys going to make money and all this stuff? And then over time, the more we talked to them and the more we came back to them, it's like, we think we have a really good way to showcase your product and and they agreed and, and that and they brought on a new head of that that department michael radik who's just awesome i actually interviewed him one time back in the day he's just a, a great leader basically we were able to wrap our minds around just a, a partnership that where we could grow together a little bit and just provide exposure to one another and experience to one another and so it just was a great story of how kind of different people in the space trying to work towards similar goals, just like linked yeah. arms and we're still doing that today. It's, it's really cool. And I think for me, that's probably one of the coolest things about the space in general is you just meet these incredible people who have similar interests and you're like, Hey, let's build something cool together. And two years later, you're like still working with them. <laughs> it's like the coolest Literally, thing. Literally. It's quite surreal to be honest with you. And I think it's quite amazing how you're able to make that connection with authentic vision. I think connecting with anybody in the space on any type of level that brings value to one another, whether it be a very minuscule value or great value that can lead to many great opportunities down the road for yourself, any sort of connection you make is a positive one at the end of the day, even if it is negative. You just have to be sure. optimistic about those connections. And yeah. I think networking is key for growth. And as yeah. well, especially if you want to be able to work in this space down the road. Because it's honestly, 100%, 100%. yeah, it's honestly at the end of the day, not going to stop evolving. Jobs are going to be continued to be made. Businesses are going to be continued to develop. And it's just a matter of finding where you fit in the ecosystem. And what I like to personally do is tell people just simply, what do you enjoy? At the end of the day, yeah. find a way to do what you enjoy and scale it and actually monetize it. Those yeah. are my sort of words of advice to yeah. anybody looking to get in the space. Yeah, no, I think there's a ton of wisdom there. I think if you look at the at least the people that I know in the space, they took an already existing passion or skill and they just married it with the blockchain or they married yeah. it with the community and around different projects or maybe there's something specific about different chains that have helped them along. Just I guess one anecdote for me and th there's other blockchains that certainly could could have met this same description but i know that in the early days of phantom just because and if you're not for those who aren't familiar with phantom it was uh, still today but i think one of the big draws early on for creators was to to mint a collection on ethereum in early 2021 it was like literally hundreds of dollars if not a thousand us dollars and so when you're an artist whether it's an artist in a place where you know relative to the us dollar developing country what have you or you're an artist that's trying to get visibility in, in the States, right? That's expensive. That's a lot of money to just take a gamble on. And so I know for our experience, it, it just felt perfect to be able to go. We minted our first collection on Phantom for under a dollar, literally pennies to mint it. So it was like a no brainer. And so yeah. I think a lot of these just incredibly talented artists just flocked to phantom and there were certain people who were really integral to that effort that were already plugged into different artist communities and things just brought this incredible amount of talent to 
to uh, to Phantom, and it just created these really cool experiences for people. And yeah, I think that was anyway just an anecdote, but about how Definitely. you can take a passion and make it into something in the space. Amazing, and you eventually find yourself on Hedera. And I gotta ask, did you find yourself here through True Voodoo? Of course, as many do <laughs> in all their endeavors. Of course. Truly, he's a goat and he's a legend. He's great at onboarding and he knows what he's talking about. You know uh, what? We're, one, I just want to say we're great to have you here. I'm very thankful because <laughs> if you weren't here, I probably would have never met you on Phantom. But now that you're starting to talk more about Phantom, how cheap it is to mint collections and things of that nature, yeah. it's starting to catch my interest and All right. <laughs> might start looking into some Phantom NFTs down the road. Who knows? Yeah, for sure. For sure. But man, True Voodoo is one of my, if not my favorite person in the space, one of my favorite, I've got a chance to, I consider him a friend for sure. Now he's just, he's just somebody that just has his head screwed on straight and mm -hmm. just loves to see people succeed. And I, I don't know anybody personally who has done more for creators and just people in the space in general. So huge shout out to, to True Voodoo. Truly. So I got to ask now, these NFTs, they're metaverse compatible, right? Yeah, so I can tell you right now, we have not implemented them into a, a metaverse. So, but they're compatible. Compatible, yes, but not, but not ones that we've. You know, I, I'll let me take a step back. Really, really gone back and forth a lot with how much we think that space and how fast we think that space is going to grow, and this might not be the most popular thing that I say or soundbite that I've ever said on the internet. <laughs> but I think we're I think we're a ways away from from seeing physical NFTs in the metaverse. Okay. Yeah. And so that is going to be in in a pretty large contradiction to this next thing which I'm about to say, which is that we've always thought about the experience that we've wanted to bring people in this way, which is we want people to be able to have what we've considered the trilemma or the, sorry, not the trilemma, the trifecta, which is the NFT, the physical wearable and the metaverse wearable. Yeah. So that to us is it, it's gotta be the end all be all right. But I think we're at a place where it's truly just completely like humbly and honestly speaking, like it's difficult enough right now for us to communicate the like physical version of an NFT, like that is, it's truly, I think for everyone doing it, even if it's RTFKT or Azuki, and these are ones that are, they already have these cult followings and it's just, it's hard enough for them to actually be able to do it in a sustainable business model. And so us being a small shop, a boutique shop, it's, we have to pick our battles a little bit, but again, I'm proud to say, or not proud to say, the reality is we've just built this from the ground up with, we have any funding or anything like that. We've just built it and we're passionate about it. I think it's something that when more tools become available, we're all for it. And it is absolutely a part of the vision, but it's something that I think we've tried to take the resources that we have available to us and just focus them in places where we think we're going to get a little bit more return right now. Yeah, definitely. Sorry NFTs, to disappoint. <laughs> no, NFTs of themselves are a hard push already as we speak. Mm -hmm. And then getting into the metaverse, that starts blowing people's minds. They don't know how to comprehend something of that nature yet. And I think specifically with metaverses, currently speaking, I think there's too many competitors out there trying to go towards that same goal. And not all of them are going to win. And whoever does, by all means, congratulations. But it's like the same concept. Everybody's trying to create these worlds where they can go in, buy all these different products. But what do these products actually have to do with real value and physical value and actually being able to feasibly own it and stuff of that nature? The metaverse just, it really confuses a lot of people. And I'm still a part of that group of people. But I think once the time comes and the metaverse is established somewhere, these clothing pieces will fit really well part of it. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. And so I probably gave you a, or the audience kind of a false sense of like our view on it because I we we spent probably my, the other partner in, in T's probably spent the better part of three or four months really deep diving. This was probably 18 months ago now and looked at all we could do in whether it was Sandbox or Decentraland. And obviously there's Metaverse Fashion Week and all these things. And we're completely, yeah. we're well aware of it. And we know 
that we could build some really cool things in the space. We've gone through different designs and we have an artist that we've worked with that has done some awesome visuals for us that could f- make everything that we want to make in the space and actually architect it. But it's just something that, again, sitting here in almost a two year a bear market, not quite, but it's where we've tried to really think about how to best use our resources and make sure that when we can actually capitalize on people getting involved in the space again, that we're able to do so and then just put ourselves in a really good position for the long run. Forward thinking, but being rational at the same time, not a bad perspective. Trying. <laughs> nice. What was your thoughts whenever you saw Lehman put on the sweater for the first time? That had to be last year, right? I, sh- I was shook. Yeah, I was just I like, been too. <laughs> it was obviously all thanks are due to True Voodoo for making those connections. But man, it was it was definitely humbling to just see one of the people just absolutely being an architect of the space and being just the pillar, one of the pillars of this community to just to wear one of the sweaters. It was it was humbling to say the least. But I think I was just so happy. Honestly, yeah. I was just like, like, smiling so much i was just laughing it was like unbelievable so that's he did like the did you ever unboxing try... <laughs> it was so great yeah nice did you ever try showing any of your friends that photo of lehman with the sweater <laughs> on and seeing what they thought they probably thought this was just some crazy old guy but in reality <laughs> he's one of the most influential people on hedera as we speak and yeah. to, since the beginning <laughs> You know what? I found that with my normie friends, it's just, it's a lost cause at this point. Like, it really is. Yeah. There's just a different world that they're living in. I honestly don't think I showed anybody, which I think maybe made it even a little bit more enjoyable for myself. Bad. Nice. It's funny. So when do you, or sorry, not when, how do you manufacture these high quality pieces of clothing? I know you have partnership with Hedera Yacht Club as yeah. well as Potluck Protocol and some other projects on Phantom, as well as Hedera. I think NFT was one of those as well. So how do you manufacture all these incredible pieces rather than going the route of like Shopify and Printful or Printfy and stuff of that nature? Yeah, so gosh, it's, it's I don't want to say a long story, but I would say that there really wasn't any secret to it. I would say that we started with our network, which admittedly was limited. But just through like, within like the fashion and apparel manufacturing space. But really, then we just tried out as many companies as we could, whether it's making sure that we have the right quality of blanks for t shirt printing, for example, or now at the point where we've basically, I don't even know how many different manufacturers that we tried to get samples from and things like that. And to the point where we were able to find one that now has a custom blank that they make specifically for us for t-shirts. Nice. So yeah, it's, yeah, it was just a lot of grinding to tell you the truth, like most things in this space, but it was trying everything out and ultimately landing on some things that we like And it's iterative, right? Like we've had in our gosh, four or five different collections. We've got four or five different shirts, just base model t-shirts. This the sweater, I happen to know the the owner of the largest ugly sweater production company in the US. And wow. that's been a that's been a great strategic partnership for us. And these and I'm looking forward to I always am looking forward to sending one of these out because I know that the reception is always, wow, these are great quality. And I would love to be able to take credit for it and say, I sourced all of the cotton. And but these are like, I think something that we've come to appreciate in this space is like we want to leverage the people who are experts in what they're experts in, whether it's a developer, whether it's using Cantor codes on NFT or who is just like a, a genius, like literally a genius to the people that make the best Christmas sweaters. Like I'm, I'm not, I don't want to cut any corners. If we're, if we want to make a great polo, like I want to find out who's making great polos and, and make them for Hedera. And embroidery on the collar. I yeah. love that. Yeah, I think you have to when you, especially because and to tell you the truth, to to ship something, to ship even just like this Hedera Yacht Club, and I'm just gonna just because I love like their designs and everything and their colors. So this is the this is their sweater, right? To ship one of these things anywhere outside of the U.S., it's at least twenty five dollars U.S. It could be up to thirty five depending on the country. Sheesh. And I'm not talking about I'm not talking about like obscure parts of like mountainous Asia. I'm talking about to ship something to Germany is like thirty dollars. Philippines, Thailand, stuff yeah. of that nature. 
Yeah. And we'll do it, but it's, it's going to take a little while and it's going to be expensive. So we want to make sure the quality is there because we have to, at the end of the day, just to get them shipped there, that means our price has to at least be $30, right? So in general, and sometimes projects like Kadira Yacht Club, they're incredible and they've- Shout out Captain Ron. Yeah. Oh, Cap is the best. But yeah, just taking this, going to the lengths of subsidizing that for his community and things so that he knows we'll want to acquire the pieces. And But even then, it's we, we have there's a minimum price that we have to charge for these things. And and I, I do want to address too, because I think on the sweaters, we were pretty ambitious going in last year and we had a higher price point on the sweaters. And we just, when we thought about running them again this year, we just came back to the idea that we'd rather have people wear them and get to enjoy them and experience them and wear them so they can explain to Uncle Frank at Christmas <laughs> what the hash graph is than just not ship them out. We dropped, we dropped the price point. I think right now they're about 55 USD, but to give you a sense in the US, we're able to cover our costs and then some a little bit, but if we're shipping these out to places in Europe and Asia after shipping them out, there's really not much to take home, but that's not what it's always about in this space, right? It's no. about getting your product out there and having conversations like this, meeting with the right people. And we're more than happy to, to do it. And honestly, every time I see somebody post with one of these things, it just makes my day. So We've seen a lot recently, that's for sure. And it, everybody who's getting them obviously loves them. They're great. They look super high quality. And just the design is super, it just fits the time of year. It's holiday season. <laughs> Got to get with it. That's and I right, just love man. how the H is just right on the middle of the chest. It, it fits perfectly. Thanks, Are you man. planning on venturing into any other chains though, by chance, besides Phantom or Hedera? Yeah, I can tell you right now, we don't have like a, a specific launch nailed down, but I know in partnership with Authentic Vision, right now their digital soul, which is what I was describing, that physically transferable or the action of physically transferring to a wallet that is operable on Polygon right now. So that might be a strategic partnership. I don't want to put a date on it again, but there might yeah. be a strategic partnership out there where we venture out to, to Polygon and show off that technology and also put our put ourselves in the fray a little bit there too. I would say more than likely, if it's not Phantom, if it's not Hedera, if it's not AVAX, then yeah, I would say probably Polygon. Not bad. I think Polygon would be another great fit for you guys as well. They're one of the more of a higher volume on chain for yeah. NFT specifically. So you'll get more eyes definitely viewing the prize. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Nice. What excites you the most about the future of fashion and NFTs? Man, you know what? I think that's a great question. When I first started thinking about what I wanted to do in the space, I told you I kept coming back to physical things, but the the counterfeit industry overall is like a it's a half a trillion dollar industry every year. It, I believe it. Between 400 and 500 billion and if you think about counterfeit fashion items, counterfeit Nike's, counterfeit Gucci, whatever it is, that's a sizable chunk of that. Estimates range like crazy 50 billion, yeah. 200 billion, no, but it's a large amount. And so I think there's a really cool element there that I like as somebody that, again, has a real estate background and just appreciating the importance of that physical item. And so I think that was one thing. I think something that's really exciting to me now as we've gotten into the space and we've had the opportunity to partner with so many incredible artists. I would say that is probably the thing that just genuinely keeps me going or makes me excited is that you never know when we're going to be able to do the next partnership, like being able to have our first experience just partnering with Hedera on these sweaters was like eye opening. So fun. Yeah. And then being able to partner with Hedera Yacht Club, who is like doing the coolest thing like ever. And <laughs> before you even bring the blockchain into the just like onboarding all these people and it's fantastic. Like, so for me, that is just the most fun thing about it. And just to think about doing different partnerships in the future, we had the opportunity to, this is just a cool, if I can ramble for a minute here, <laughs> but this was like, I think maybe the best example so far. But when I first started to collect NFTs myself, I found this artist on Ethereum called Uman, and I would love to somehow send you a link or something like that for people who aren't familiar, but she just has these incredible characters that are like alien like they're just but she just has she's this ecuadorian artist she has this 
incredible skill to just create these these beings that just you can just look into their soul it's like incredible and it's so i started collecting and then a few months later we're on phantom and she just releases this new collection on phantom which was like this pixel art collection and we're just blown away by it and we're starting to do partnerships with different phantom artists and i don't know what made me think that we could do it but i just was like I wonder if she would do a partnership with us, like a limited partnership as part of our collection that we had been releasing in. She agreed. And so we ended up doing a 10 piece collection with her. That was like a subset of our collection. And sort of the crown jewel of this collection was we bought based on the, like a community vote. (laughs) We bought this YSL jacket, this jean jacket to be the canvas for this physical. And then we sent it to her. She physically painted on it. And she's an unbelievable, like traditional medium artist, like painter. Saw and on the website. Yeah, she painted it. And like we this was the coolest item we've ever done. And it auctioned for twenty four thousand USD. And that says everything about her art and nothing about what we can do. <laughs> right. But it just <laughs> those sorts of things are like, wow. We literally just started off loving this artist's work and then just were like, hey, I wonder if we could somehow trick them into working with us. (laughs) It worked. Yeah. And obviously you just say that completely humbly, but it was just a cool experience. And just more things like that. I just know that the longer we're in the space, the more that we're going to have the ability to have experiences like that and meet people at physical meetups and things like that. It's just, it's just great. It's just really enjoyable. Things take time, but it's it's definitely worth that time spent. Just got to yeah. enjoy the moment. Enjoy the ride. Absolutely. It's a lot of fun. Any, yeah. Any closing thoughts, James? It's been closing. a pleasure. Yeah. Thanks, Tate. I appreciate it. It's been a pleasure for me, too. Closing thoughts is just, it's just been awesome to get to know people on Hedera. It's interesting when you bounce around a little bit, seeing the different personalities of the community that large. And I've just found that the Hedera community is like, super chill, super like knowledgeable, super plugged in, not very shilly, like relatively, I would say. And uh, yeah, it's just been super cool. Whether it's Hello Future Buzz or hey, it's Brandon, H. Barbel, Bonacci has been awesome. Um, just started to, to meet him recently. NF tier, just so many people. King Solomon did a post for us like last year. Names to names, like, to it's, be honest, yeah. They're all amazing. Yeah. And what did we, we're just here. We're just like yeah. soaking it up. Yeah. It's just been great and really looking forward to honestly some brighter days ahead. And I know that long term, when you hit your wagon to projects like more than a project, companies like Hedera and everything the community has done and rallied around, it's, it's tough to lose. So we're just excited and yeah. happy to be along for the ride. Couldn't agree more. I just want to say thank you once again, James, for taking the time to join me to discuss everything about teas. If you guys, anybody who's listening, currently speaking, if they want to purchase one of those holiday sweaters, I'll have that link below as well as all of T's links as well. It's been a true pleasure. I love saying that word, but it has, James. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you all next episode. Peace. Welcome to Gilmore Estates, where we pave your way to real estate success. Our state-of-the-art platform is tailored to empower people from diverse backgrounds, helping them thrive in the world of real estate investment. Through the magic of hetera NFTs, educational resources, and regular evaluations, you'll not only learn but also earn valuable HTS token, G-Coin rewards along the way. Our innovative tokenomics model closely replicates real estate cash flow dynamics, meaning the more G-Coin you possess, the larger your monthly cash flow. And the cherry on top, our launchpad grants you the opportunity to own fractions of assets from well-established real estate holding companies. Unleash your potential and start your journey to financial success with Gilmore Estates today.